So, if you would tonight and you have your Bibles and you're ready for preaching this evening, I'd like for you to turn your Bibles over into the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, and we'll read one verse of Scripture tonight, and uh, we'll uh, read verse 13. And I'm glad that God enables us to be able to do the things that we don't even feel that it's possible that we can do. Did you know that we can be able to do things tonight that uh, maybe we haven't went to school for or been trained for? And uh, it amazes me how people uh, begin to uh, realize how good the Lord is by helping them to uh, you know, perform and do tasks that uh, they never dreamed would even be possible. As a young man, I would never have dreamed that uh, I would be able to stand and preach and do what I do in front of people, but, uh, but I'm glad that God uh, called me, and I'm glad that the Lord has sent me here, and uh, as I said this morning, we love you and thank God for you, but uh, if you found your place tonight, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, stand with me tonight. If you're physically able and can, and we'll reverence the reading of God's holy word. Verse 13, and uh, then after I read this verse, you're going to be thinking, well, why in the world did he name, or entitle this message this? So, uh, but anyway, the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Philippi, and he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I'm going to read that again. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Tonight, that's a great promise from God, but I want to preach on four things that God absolutely cannot do. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, love you, Lord, and thank you, God, so very much for everything you've done for us throughout this day. And God, you know the trials and things that we've been going through ourselves. But, Lord, greater is he that's in us tonight than he that's in this world. And I just pray that you be with me and my family, and, Lord, just help us at this time. God, we pray, Lord, tonight that, Lord, that you would help us, Jesus, to understand that we do have abilities, but our abilities can only come from you. And, Lord, we're not looking at anything tonight that diminishes your power and your abilities, but, God, we know tonight, Lord, that we can do all things through you, who gives us strength to do so. But, Father, Father, I pray that we'll recognize the things, Lord, tonight that you cannot do. And, Lord, just take and bless me and use me for the next few moments. God, give us a good time of fellowship after our service tonight. And we ask your will to be accomplished here this evening. Lord, touch the hearts of those that are listening in by the means of this CD ministry and by the means of the YouTube videos that's being posted. I pray that, God, that you'll just take and just, uh, Lord, just take and let your will be accomplished here tonight. And, Lord, Lord, I love you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. And I ask this all in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. God bless you tonight. You may be seated. Again, as always, I'm very thankful that we have the services that we get to post on uh, YouTube. And a lot of people get to listen in by the CD ministry that we uh, take and do here at the church. And I'm so grateful that we're able to do that. But if you'll tune in to Southeastern Baptist Church of Great Kentucky, if you'll just type that in on a search on YouTube, it'll bring you right up to uh, a lot of the preaching and services that we have here at church. And I pray that you'll just uh, get people, uh, have them, uh, you know, just uh, sometimes they won't uh, come here and hear us preach, but maybe sometimes they will tune in there. So I pray that uh, you'll uh, just advocate that. Southeastern Baptist Church. Uh, at uh, Gray, Kentucky, and I, I thank God will take and bless you uh, for doing that, and I believe the Lord will get his word out. But tonight, as I said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but the reason why that I say that is, is because that it's only through the abilities of God that we can do anything. I can't do anything without God, but I can do all things through him who strengthens me. But tonight, we want to be able to preach 
just a little while. This morning we preached on four things that God don't know. And uh, some of you all, I, I believe, uh, one sister was telling me as she was going out the door this morning how much she enjoyed that message, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but tonight, you know, also there is four things that God cannot do. And uh, there was a Sunday school teacher one time. It uh, kind of tickled me. Uh, in her Sunday school class, she began to ask the children, and she said, is there anything that God cannot do? Well, little Mary, she began to uh, think about it for just a little while, and she said, teacher, she said, you know what? Said, God can never leave us nor forsake us. Said, you know, the Lord, the Bible says that God will go all the way with us even to the ends of this world. She said, well, that's right, Mary. She said, God cannot leave us. She said, that's very good. And then uh, she went to little Billy, and little Billy, he was excited, and he had his hand up. He said, teacher, he said, I know something that God can't do. Said, God can't stop loving us. She said, well, why do you say that, Billy? He said, over in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3, he said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. She said, well, Billy, that's right. She said, God, uh, that he can't stop loving us. He has an everlasting love. But always little Johnny, little Johnny was there, and he had his little hand raised, but the teacher sure didn't want to get to little Johnny, but she couldn't avoid him, so she said, Johnny, she said, do you know something that Jesus can't do? He said, well, he said, I don't know if the Bible says it or not, but he said, he said, Jesus can't please everybody. He says, that's what my daddy says. Amen. <laughs> so uh, maybe Jesus can't please everybody. But I know that he's done everything that he possibly could to be able to bring us to a place that we could be pleasing unto him. But tonight, I, I want you to know that there is some things that God cannot do. And I'll share these with you. May not hold you here all night. But let's look at some of these this evening and see if you can think about something that God can't do. Number one tonight, God cannot die. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. That ought to be enough to get everybody in here shouting and praising God because God cannot die. I'm telling you all the other uh, uh, different things that people have been worshiping and trying to lift up. Uh, if you, As the old saying goes, you go over there and you look in Buddha's grave, uh, there would probably be evidence of Buddha's uh, body or his, uh, his uh, bones and things like that. They said Muhammad said if you went to be able to try to find Muhammad, there you would find his bones. It's a something how many people that they have uh, dug up all through out Egypt and other places and the sarcophagus and I began to show and see all these mummified bodies that's there. Uh, but I'm glad if you go over into Jerusalem and you go down to where that they say that Jesus' tomb is supposed to be, you can search it out all you want to. You can call in all the FBI and all the Secret Service and one thing that they'll never be able to find, they'll never be able to find the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Uh, because he didn't stay dead. Amen. I'm glad for that. Uh, but God cannot die. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17, Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, and invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, whenever that Paul began to talk to Timothy about a Jesus Jesus Christ in his, uh, his eternal order. He began to say that uh, he was a king that was inter eternal. He was immortal, invisible, of uh, the only wise God. Honor be given to him forever and forever. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 40, For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. Praise God. I'm glad tonight that God, whenever that he uh, was recognized to be in existence that he will never uh, take and he'll never be somebody that is going away and not exist any longer. I know that they have got, uh, I noticed this past week, they began to recognize a museum at the Smithsonian and they had done so many uh, great things and great uh, uh, renovations and things.
things like that. But they began to talk about uh, the dinosaur age and all of the dinosaur skeletons that they have there and have uh, begun to get them presented. Uh, but you want me to tell you something, friend? I, I don't know exactly how long and all these things. They, uh, they calculate it as being millions and millions and millions of years old. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this much. I believe that a little over 2,000 years ago, there was a man called Jesus. And I believe, my friend, that he was the Son of God. And I believe, my friend, that he's on the right hand of the Father tonight. And he's making intercession for every single one of us tonight. Praise God for that. Uh, but even if you went back close to 7,000 years ago, uh, whenever that they think about the time that uh, that was probably whenever creation and whenever that God uh, uh, began to move upon this earth and be able to create man. I'm not here to argue the point. The only thing that I'm here to tell you is, is that they've been trying to kill God for a long time and praise the Lord, He's still alive tonight. Uh, the Bible said in Job 36 and verse 26, He said, Behold, God is great and we know Him not. Neither can the number of His years be searched out. I want you to know tonight, friend, I don't know how old God is, uh, but praise God, He was at the beginning and He'll be at the end and He'll be at eternity. Uh, God is never going to fade away. So I'm glad tonight uh, that there's one thing that God can't do. God cannot die. Uh, that's why I believe that Jesus said in John 14 and verse 19, He said, Because I live, ye shall live also. If we had a God tonight that was not alive and was not well, uh, then maybe I might take and doubt my eternal security in Him. Uh, but praise God, I've got a God that ain't going to die out on me. He's not going to get sick. He ain't going to be able to have some kind of cancer that's going to take Him out. He's not going to die of old age. Glory to God, He's not the old man above. Uh, but He's God tonight. And I just thank God for that, that God uh, cannot die. Uh, but then the second thing I'm going to tell you tonight is, is that not only God can't die, but God can't lie. <laughs> God cannot lie. You say, Brother Paul, how do you know that? Because the Bible says so. The Bible says over in Titus 1 and verses 2 and 3, it said, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Aren't you glad tonight that God manifests himself through and by the preaching of his word? I'm glad tonight, praise God, that everything that Jesus has had written, everything that God has had recorded, even from the very first word of Genesis to the last amen of Revelation is God's truth. I don't care how you try to decipher it. I don't care how you want to break it down. I'm just going to tell you tonight, everything that God has given us in His Word is the gospel and it is the truth and there's no mixture of air that is within it. That's why that I believe that the Apostle Paul, he gave Titus a great exhortation that God that cannot lie. Uh, somebody said, Brother Paul, do you believe in eternal security? and believe that you're saved forever because you're a Baptist? I said, no, I believe that because my God is not an Indian giver. He doesn't take and go back on His Word. And if God saved me forever, glory to God, I'm saved eternally. Amen. I'm glad tonight that God, He can't die and He can't lie. The Bible said in Hebrews 6 and verse 17 and 18, he said, We're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immobility of his counsel. And he said, Confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was possible, it was impossible, it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Now, God said that he began to show to the heirs of his promise the immobility 
of his counsel. Now, do you, do you know what the word immutability means or the word immutable? It means something that changes not, something that cannot change, something that will not vary. So God gave us a promise. Now listen, folks, I, I'm not somebody that says that you live any way you want to and say you're going to heaven and everything's all right. I believe tonight, praise God, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to live like a Christian. If you, if you call yourself a Christian, you ought to talk like a Christian. If you take and if you call yourself a Christian, I believe that there ought to be enough evidence in your life to be able to convict you in a court of law that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ as a child of God. I believe that there ought to be enough in us to be able to have that. But the thing is, is that we had the promise of the immutability of his counsel. Confirmed it by an oath. Now what that means is, I, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I just about want to take and run. I, I just want to get so happy that I could just jump and walk these pews. And you say, Brother Paul, that's a little crazy. No, it's not a bit crazy to be able to realize that God gave us a promise and God made us an oath. And by those two unchangeable things, praise God, we have the promise of eternal life. And uh, I have people all the time that says, you know, Brother Paul, I just don't believe that. My friend, if you doubt one part of God's word, you're doubting through the whole entire thing. That's why I believe tonight whatever God says, it's forever settled in heaven. It don't matter what you believe, what I believe, but if God said it, praise God, it's forever settled in heaven. I'm glad for that. So whatever God promises, that he will keep. So we find two things tonight God can't do. God, first of all, he can't what? He can't die. Number two, he can't what? He can't lie. So I'm glad tonight that there's enough scripture that reinforces that. There's been enough manifestation. Whenever you think about manifestation, I think about how that I can't see wind I can't see how that, you know, when, where it comes from and exactly where it's going. But I see the evidence whenever I see the trees moving. <laughs> there was people this past week that literally saw their houses blown completely away from them. One woman was in the bathroom of her home and the whole entire house went away from her but her bathroom and she was in there. Aren't you glad you know God? <laughs> Aren't you glad that Jesus, he can still take care of us? But I think about how that God, Brother Rick, how that the Lord manifests his self. How many times have you all been sitting in church and you've listened to a message and you've heard the word of God, uh, but then all of a sudden it seems like God just becomes uh, so real. It almost seems like the words of those pages are coming up and, and they're lively, they're, they're living, they're beginning to move. I tell you, what we need to be able to see the God of this holy Bible somebody amen that we need to be able to see it because he manifests himself through and by his word but God cannot die God cannot lie but this third thing I believe this with all my heart I believe God cannot remember one sin that he has ever forgiven and placed under the blood. I don't believe God can remember a sin that he has forgiven. The Bible said in Jeremiah 31 and 34, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. All know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Now you got to think about that tonight. That's another thing to make you want to shout. I've had stuff that maybe I can't begin to forget. But God, whenever that the devil brings it up to him, whatever he's forgiven me of, he says like that old song, What sins are you talking about? 
I don't remember them anymore. I'm glad tonight that God, whenever that he forgives a sin, he doesn't remember that sin. He doesn't keep hashing over it. And the devil will try his best to get us to keep thinking about it and make us feel as bad as he possibly can. But the Bible said that God in Jeremiah 31 and 34, he said, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. I'm glad for that tonight because God begins to not remember one solitary sin. He cannot remember one sin that he ever forgive. I hear uh, Brother Eddie back here several times as he has uh, made reference to this and brother Eddie you'll have uh, some preacher sometime they'll get real harsh on you and they'll say that's not right but it is right it's what the Bible says but it says it in a, another way but in Micah 7 and verse 19 the Bible said he will turn again he will have compassion upon us he will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of of the sea. Brother Eddie says this several different times. He said that he'll put your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. I'm glad that God's got a sea. I don't know where it's at. I don't know exactly what it looks like. I don't know how deep it is. But the one thing that I'm glad of, praise God when he puts it in there, it's not coming back to his remembrance anymore. He forgives us forever and forever. Listen, take and rejoice tonight and be exceedingly glad that your name is found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Why? Because God has begun to take our sea, our sins and put them in the sea of forgetfulness and listen my friend, he meant what he said. He meant what he said. I've had preachers before I've said that brother Eddie and I've had them though they were going to correct me real fast and I start to think and you know I I said, what was the name of that sea then? I mean, God said he was going to do that. He said that he, he would put them into the depths of the sea. What was the name of that sea? Forgetfulness sounds like a good sea to me. Amen. I believe tonight whenever that you start thinking about, you know, uh, there's a place over in Tennessee that's called the Lost Sea. And uh, I, was, I was always scared about going over there. I never have been there. But they had these glass bottom boats and they said that they had fish that you could see swimming around out through them glass bottom boats and then fish was blind. And they were blind because they stayed in that sea that was lost. And I thought to myself, boy, don't that sound just like a bunch of lost people to you? Don't that sound just like people that has not even begun to really realize the truth of the glorious lie of the gospel and they're just in a sea that is lost and going about without any direction? I'm glad tonight, praise God, that God, whenever that He saves us, He does not remember one solitary sin that He has forgiven. Psalms 103 and verse 12 said, As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. So I'm glad tonight that God cannot remember one solitary sin that he has ever forgiven. Hebrews 10, verse 16 through 18. You can take and look this up, but it says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into your hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now, he said, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. I'm glad, praise God, whenever that I come to Jesus Christ and he forgave me of all of my sins, I don't have to go back out and get another lamb. I don't have to find another sacrifice. I don't have to try to do enough good deeds. Jesus, praise God, when he entered into that holy place, he entered in once and for all. Amen. And I'm glad tonight, praise God, that God, he can't lie, he can't die, but he can't remember one solitary sin that he ever forgave. A lot of us tonight need to study a little bit more and be able to find some of these these uh, main verses that gives us verification 
of what God's done for us. We would be a lot happier as Christians once we realize that God has taken away the accountability of our sin. Somebody told me a little while back, they said, boy, I sure did like how you said that God would take and bring us into judgment. Yes, he will bring us into judgment. There will be, with all my heart, I believe this, and if I'm wrong, just chalk it up, honey, I've been wrong before. But I believe in the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. I believe in the Bema seat of God. I believe that the people of God, the Christians, will stand before a judgment before the Son of God. And I believe that we will receive for our works what we've done. I believe God will take and give us our reward for those things. And some of us may just get in by the skin of our teeth because our work shall be tried by fire. Some will be silver and gold and they will take and be able to be seen. But some will be wood, hay, and stubble. That means that when the judgment fires of God hits them, it'll puff them. And I mean, they ain't going to be nothing there. But you say, what is that getting to, Brother Paul? The thing that that gets to is, is that we will stand forth a judgment. But then I also believe in the great white throne judgment of God. I believe that that will be the judgment throne where we shall be compassed about it. I believe also that there will be the small and great that will stand before God. And I believe that they will be searched out to see if their names was found written in the book of life. And those who were not found written in that book shall be cast out into a lake of fire that burneth with brimstone, and that will be the second death for them, and they will burn throughout eternity. Now, I believe that. But the thing that I want you all to understand and know is, is that God, my friend, he's going to bring us to a judgment. And maybe we, you know, haven't done everything that we should. But I believe that God will take and be fair with us. I believe that God will be just with me. And I said, if God was just with me, I'd probably get hell. You understand me? I'm not worthy of heaven. I'm not worthy of everything God's given me. And I'm going to put you in my boat because you ain't either. None of us tonight is worthy of what God has done for us. It's by his grace and mercy that we have what we have through Christ tonight. But I'm glad that he loves me. <laughs> and I'm glad that he forgives me. But I said that uh, God can't die, God can't lie, God can't save, or God cannot take, and he can't remember any sins that he's ever forgiven. But then, fourthly tonight, I'll share this with you. God cannot save anybody that is not willing to be saved. God cannot save anyone who is not willing to be saved. He has sent you his word. He has sent you his son. He sent you his spirit. He sent you his love. He sent you his power. And he's giving you his invitation. What else could he do? What more could God have done for each and every one of us than to be able to give us his son, his spirit, his love, his power, his invitation? But it's up to you to come and receive the gift. The other day, I was out and I was mowing, and uh, I couldn't help but think about Madonna. Whenever that I had the gift, and I said that, you know, I have a gift here this morning, and the one that can receive this gift, I said, all you have to do is that you have to come up here, you have to ask me for it. And I said, once you ask me for that gift, I will willingly give you that gift and I will never ask for it back. But I said, you have to come and you have to ask for it. Well, here come Madonna. She stepped out and buddy, she just walked right up there. She held her hand out. 
That's the first thing she done. I remember this just like yesterday. I said, are you wanting the gift? She said, yes. I said, you have to ask for it. She said, would you please give me that gift? I said, why, sure. I said, that's as simple. That, I mean, right here it is. There you go. And I said, I will never ask for that gift back from you. That's your gift. And did you know that same action is done by the invitation of Jesus Christ? Jesus begins to invite us, as I said this morning in Revelation 22 and 17, it said that the spirit and the bride say come. And let he who heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. I think about, you know, how hard that people has made salvation and how to receive it. But aren't you glad tonight that salvation is not hard to receive? It's not hard to get. It's just hard to be able to give up your pride and be able to humble yourself down. But I see so many people that come and go in church houses. They come and they go, they come and they go, and all they have to do is, is just take and put one foot out into the aisle and start making their way to down here. <laughs> That's all they have to do. You say, oh, but Brother Paul, there is so much more. They've got to be consecrated. They have got to uh, be committed. They have to really uh, take and live this Christian life. <laughs> no, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, whosoever will, let him come and drink. God never said that you had to be able to know all about the, the integrant uh, type of structure of how thirst is quenched. He never said that you had to learn everything about H2O and, and being able to pronounce uh, water in, in, uh, in Spanish that's agua. And he, he never wanted you to begin to research everything out. He just wanted you to come as a sinner and just humble yourself and be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 21 Paul said, but to Israel, he saith, all day long, I've stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and a gainsaying people. God cannot die. God cannot lie. God cannot take and remember one sin that he ever forgave. But my friend, God cannot save anybody until that they're willing to be saved people say oh brother Paul don't you think we ought to be praying that God will save these sinners around here no what you don't think that we need to be asking God to save sinners no because see God's willing to save whosoever will we need to pray that sinners will become obedient to the invitation of God you all can stand outside that door all you want to. And I can go and open up that door. And I'd say, come on in. But my friend, you ain't going to make it in here until you get up and come in yourself. Because one thing I ain't going to do, now, I'm a pretty big feller. I'm stout as a bear still. My back ain't worth much, but I'm still pretty stout. And I guarantee you that I'll give you a wrestle for your money if I had to try to get you in here. But see, God never called me to wrestle you. God called me to preach to you. He called me. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what God said we wrestle against. But God never wanted me to grab you up and try to get you in here. All God done was is he said, come, <laughs> come. 
The Spirit says come. The Holy Ghost of God. That's why I love it whenever that we get to have somebody that's under conviction here at the church. Nah, we ain't got a big bunch of number of people. No, we ain't got people knocking the doors down, trying to get in here, standing outside all around the parking lot. No, we don't have that. But one thing that we do have is, is that we've got the third person of the triune of God that brings communication between man and God inside this building. And his name is the Holy Ghost. And he can get a hold of you in such a way that, my friend, he can bring you to a place of repentance if you will just come. He will not force you, but he will make you so thirsty that you'll want something. And you know what really troubled me was is the rich man in Luke chapter 16. He said, you go send Lazarus. And he said, if he could just take and just get one little drop of water. I can't even get one drop of water to fall off my finger. He said, and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. But you know what? Did you notice something the rich man never asked Abraham for? He never said, why is he over there and I'm down here? He never asked, how did he get up there and I got down here? He knew why he was there. So please, don't wait until you go to hell and say God wasn't fair to me and God didn't give me a chance. Nobody will ever go to hell without God giving them an invitation. So I believe tonight, God can't die, God can't lie, God can't remember one sin that he put under the blood, and God cannot save anybody that don't want to be saved. Thank you so very much for tuning in by the means of these recordings that we're sending out, and I hope and pray that it's been a blessing to you. I hope that you will maybe take part in our worship services. The times will be at the end of this video. You can be able to view our church times. And uh, also, uh, we are going to be changing the 1st of April uh, back to 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. But anyway, we want to just thank you so much, and I hope and pray that God has spoke to you through this message today. If he has, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, our telephone number and address is at the end of this uh, video, and you can begin to just drop us a note or uh, just uh, let us know how you enjoy uh, the message and enjoy the, the part that God is sending out to you. Uh, I just thank God so much that he's made this available to us to be able to share with you. So uh, if you haven't uh, really trusted Christ as your Savior, my hope and prayer is is that you could just bow your head right where you're at, be able to understand and know that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus in your life and that you could be able to be inspired by the Spirit of God to be able to just say, Lord, God, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me. And the Bible promises that he'll do just like that. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So uh, I hope and pray that if you made this decision that you'll get in touch with us or get into a Bible-believing church somewhere uh, local to you and uh, be able to just go up, make your profession of faith, and confess Christ as your Savior there before the people. But time is running out, so I, I beg of you today, please turn your heart over to the Lord. Come and be with us. We'd love to have you. Got plenty of room. And uh, I just hope and pray if God, we, if it's his will that you could come and be with us, we would love to be able to just uh, take you right in to the church family there at Southeastern Baptist Church. So God bless you until the next time we get to meet again through these recordings. And I pray that the Lord will just richly bless you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hope and pray that you got a little more faith today. God bless you.